Greetings, everyone. In this short talk podcast, I'm going to do uh, a, a little bit of wave basics and talking about our next unit. So when we're looking at waves, uh, this is section 15.1, 15.3 in your textbook if you want to follow along with some of these ideas. Um, but when we're looking at different types of waves, we can really categorize them based upon um, the, the type of, of, of substance or medium uh, that the wave is traveling through. So we're going to talk about a couple of the different um, types of substances or mediums um, that define how we categorize um, the wave that we're looking at. So uh, we have mechanical waves and non-mechanical waves. So let's talk about these two different types and the difference between them. So mechanical waves, um, we need to have a medium in order for this wave to travel. A physical medium for this wave to propagate through. Um, so some examples, if I have a string and I wiggle it back and, for back and forth, um, that disturbance transfers energy along the string, and we can have uh, a wave on a string. If I splash um, an anchor into a pond and it disturbs the pond surface, we can have the energy transfer across the surface of the water as a uh, wave on the water. The sound that you hear coming to your ears right now um, as I'm speaking or as your computer is um, you know, pushing back and forth on a little speaker is vibrating the air and those vibrations are um, you know, bumping into other air molecules and that energy is getting transferred uh, as the air is a medium that transfers, um, that bounces into your own eardrum. So we have um, some other examples of mechanical waves. Non-mechanical waves uh, don't require a medium, a physical medium. So um, example uh, would be basically uh, any electromagnetic wave. Um, one that we love is, is light and so you know this actually includes all electromagnetic waves. So maybe you remember some of those different electromagnetic waves, infrared, uh, gamma rays, ultraviolet, all of those different types of electromagnetic radiation um, are, are going to be something that can propagate through a vacuum. We don't actually need a medium in order for those to uh, be propagating. So once we know that we can categorize these two types of waves, um, there's another types of categorization. Not only is the medium important, um, but also the direction uh, that the wave travels um, versus the direction that it oscillates. So another way we can categorize is based on the direction of wave travel versus um, the direction that it's oscillating. Okay, so these two types of waves we are going to call transverse waves and longitudinal waves. So I'm looking at a couple of different examples and so we can sort out the difference between these two. So we're looking at uh, the direction that the wave is traveling and if my wave is going, um, you know, let's say I'm looking at a wave on the, on the water. So I have my, my wave is traveling, let's say my wave is traveling out away from, I, I disrupt the water, and it's moving out here. Um, what I would notice if you've ever gone fishing, let's say you put a little bobber, you know, on my water or whatever, 
that the uh, the bobber or even a leaf or something is not going to actually go with the wave. The, the bobber or the, the leaf on the pond actually goes up and down. Um, so it oscillates up and down. That's going to be the direction of the oscillation. So if the direction of the wave um, travel is perpendicular, 90 degrees, to the direction of the oscillation, um, we have uh, a transverse wave. Um, a longitudinal wave, um, let's say I have a slinky and I want to, I like have my slinky kind of spread out across the ground and I compress it down here um, compression and I'm oscillating it back and forth I'm pushing on the slinky kind of towards in a way the rest of the slinky um, if I were to do that what we would notice is that the oscillation will actually travel down you can see it's kind of scrunched up over here um, and the direction of the oscillation is is parallel to the direction that the wave travels and so that's going to be our definition of a longitudinal wave. Parallel to direction of oscillation. Um, a good example of a longitudinal wave, um, some earth, earthquake waves um, are some examples of longitudinal waves um, that we have um, traveling in this way. There's also some transverse ones too that can occur during an earthquake. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about um, looking at a, the anatomy of a wave. And so we just got out of a unit on vibration. So we have things that are oscillating and we have this this uh, thing occurring over and over again and waves are the exact same uh, the same way so a lot of the um, the types of things that we saw as part of a uh, an oscillating system are going to be the same type of quantities that we're going to look um, as we're measuring some vibrating source of a wave so we're going to see again some quantities um, uh, we're going to see amplitude of a wave, we're going to see period of a wave, and we're going to see frequency. Um, are going to be all identical to those quantities uh, measured about a, the vibrating measured about the vibrating um, wave source. So if I watch you know, your hand on top of the water, the source of the wave, and I can measure the amplitude of your hand movements and um, the period and the frequency of how your hand is moving, um, all of those quantities are going to be the identical value for the wave as it travels through the medium. Um, so let's talk a little bit about your wavelength. And so wavelength is defined as the, the distance that my wave can travel um, during just one cycle. So that the distance wave travels forward during one cycle. And so the symbol, symbol for wavelength is lambda. And if I look at my little wave here, um, I can go crest to crest, or peak to peak, tro to tro. Um, I can go you know, to the middle, to the, to the next middle. Basically, one cycle uh, is going to be our, um, our wavelength. And we also have the uh, wave speed, how fast 
the wave is traveling. Um, and so this is just the speed at which the wave travels forward. And this is really, um, it's determined entirely by the medium. Entirely by the medium. So if I'm looking at uh, a water wave and I have my water, my, my wave going across the water, when we see it, we watch it, it has some, uh, some speed. And it really depends on the medium that it's traveling through. Um, waves in water are going to be have a different wave speed than waves traveling through air or some other uh, or earth or some other medium. So the way the different the medium that a wave has to travel through is going to actually be um, what the wave speed is dependent upon, not upon the source of the wave. And so looking at a wave speed, you know, if I look at velocity as just being uh, in general, a change of position, you know, over over some change in time, um, you know, this is just our good old definition for velocity. So this is you know any change in position or displacement um, and its corresponding time. When I look at a wave, I notice that it it covers some distance over some time. And if I look at just one cycle of the wave, which is going to be convenient to do, that distance would be uh, a wavelength. And that cycle, the time for one cycle, we would call the period. So I've got my uh, lambda over my period. And if I rewrite this um, and factor out my period as 1 over t times lambda, um, well that's just my frequency. So our equation for a wave speed, um, if we take our frequency, which remember is how many cycles per second are hertz, um, so my unit is per second, and I multiply that by some wavelength, which the unit is meters, you know meters times per second gives me units of meters per second, which totally makes sense. Uh, so this would be our equation for um, our wavelength, or our, our wave speed, excuse me. So I just have one little example. We're going to use this equation here. Um, this is actually example number eight from the new handout that we have. And so I just want to do a, a quick example. So let's look at a wave, and it goes through a full cycle of motion in a time of 35 seconds, or 0.35 seconds. Um, and this wave is going to be traveling a distance of 10 meters in that amount of time, calculate the wave's speed. Um, so whenever I'm looking at wave speed, I could always kind of go through um, you know, a change in position over a change in time. And it says this wave is uh, going through a change in position of 10 meters. And it's going to take, um, this is a full cycle of 0.35 seconds. And that's going to be equal to 28.6 meters per second. And so there's no reason I can't look at it this way. Um, I don't need to even use that uh, kind of frequency um, or wavelength. But if you wanted to go back and figure out what the wavelength would be, um, a tenth of a meter, and you could use this um, 0.35 seconds as being a full cycle of motion and use that as a period, um, you know, go back, pause the video, and double check. Could you use that equation, uh, v equals f times omega? And the answer is uh, is absolutely we could do that. Um, and so, go ahead and try that on your own, um, just to kind of confirm what we did. So it looks like the frequency here would be one over zero point three five, and the wavelength would be um, we've got uh, ten meters in that one cycle. Um, so we've got 10 meters, and so I take 10 um, times 1 over 0.35. Hey, look, we're at the same exact thing again. Um, times 10 meters, 
and you're going to get the same answer. So it really doesn't matter how we look at this. The last question says, what are the waves frequency and wavelength? Um, so frequency is just 1 over the period. And we said already that the period would be that time it takes for one cycle. And so 2.86 hertz will be our frequency. And the wavelength, because it says a full cycle, um, then we know that that is one complete cycle. That's one, um, a one wavelength. So we've got our 10 meters. All right, this has just been a, a quick video on some basics and waves, and I hope that it's been helpful.